Two people are dead, including a child, after a concrete truck struck a school bus full of pre-K children returning from a field trip head-on in Bastrop County, Texas, according to officials of the bus, traveling westbound on State Highway 21, was hit by the concrete truck traveling in the other direction, according to Texas Department of Public Safety Dion Cockrells. One child on the bus and an adult passenger in a vehicle behind the bus died, Cockrell said that the man who was killed was in a vehicle that either ran into the back of the bus or maybe part of the concrete truck. He said there was one person in the concrete truck and one man in the other vehicle. Cockrells didn't know how fast the vehicles were going. Point four people in critical condition were airlifted from the crash site. Six others with potentially serious injuries were transported by ambulance, said Kevin Parker, Division Chief Austin Travis County Emergency Medical Services. An ambulance bus transported about 10 other patients to a children's hospital with minor injuries, Parker said. Passengers on the bus included 44 students and 11 adults, according to the Hayes Consolidated Independent School District, the child who died was a precious young boy who was a pre-K student at Tom Green Elementary School in Buda, according to Eric Wright, school district superintendent. The child's name was not released. Potential deployment of French troops to Ukraine may be of benefit to Russia. Medvedev, eliminating French military personnel that may appear in Ukraine would be a critical but not particularly difficult mission for the Russian armed forces, but for Paris, such a humiliating defeat of its legions would be tantamount to being guillotined, Russian Security Council Deputy Chairman Dmitry Medvedev said. Actually, for the success of our cause, it would be nice if the restless French dispatched a couple of regiments to Banderaland. It would be very problematic to hide such a number of servicemen, so systematically eliminating them would not be the most difficult task, but surely the most important one. But just think of the beneficial knock-on effect. He wrote on his Telegram channel, as Medvedev noted, with so many coffins to be delivered to France from a foreign country, it would be impossible to hide the mass deaths of professional soldiers. There will be no chance of getting away with various lame excuses and speculations that mercenaries choose their own fate and that they are risking their lives at their own discretion. He warned the deputy head of the Russian Security Council pointed out that such military personnel would become full-fledged combatants as part of an interventionist contingent and so their destruction would be a priority and a matter of honor for the Russian armed forces. As for the Gallic roosters in the French leadership, it would be tantamount to being guillotined. They would be torn to pieces both by the enraged relatives and angry members of the opposition who have been assured all along that France is not at war with Russia. Also, it would be a good lesson for other rambunctious fools in Europe, Medvedev predicted. He suggested that the immortal lines of 19th century classic Russian writer Alexander Pushkin will prove their timeless relevance once again. Then send your numbers without number, your maddened sons, your goaded slaves. In Russia's plains there's room to slumber. And well, they'll know their brethren's graves. On March the 19th, Russian Foreign Intelligence Service Director Sergei Narishkin said that France was already preparing a military contingent to be sent to Ukraine, which would initially amount to about 2,000 soldiers. Yemen's Houthis penetrate Israel's missile defenses for the first time. Iran's Houthi militia in Yemen penetrated Israel's air defense systems with a cruise missile landing in southern Israel. While the Israel's army did not explicitly name the Yemeni militia, it is widely believed to be part of ongoing operations by the group in the Red Sea. The army of Israel is currently investigating why the missile wasn't intercepted, citing the possibility that its flight pattern caught air defense operators off guard. The Houthis who rule North Yemen, including the capital Sana'a, also claimed responsibility for the missile attack, with spokesman Yahya Sari saying the Iran-aligned group had targeted southern Israel with missile fire. The missile did not cause any damage or injury, but questions remain as to how the projectile made its way through Israeli defenses. 
The Houthis have attempted to strike Israel with ballistic missiles since the beginning of its war on Gaza last October, yet this marks the first time one has actually hit Israeli territory. Until now, all Houthi missiles have been shot down by Israel's Arrow 1 or 3 missile defense systems. One possibility as to why it evaded Israel's defenses is that because of the line drive trajectory at which cruise missiles fly, Israeli missile defense operators may have been caught by surprise, according to the Jerusalem Post. The Houthis' maritime assaults from the Red Sea region began in November, initiated by Iran's supreme leader, Ali Khamenei. After Iran backed Hamas invaded Israel on October the 7th, its relentless retaliation has seen Iran's proxies attack the Jewish state and American targets, punishing the US for supporting Israel's right to defend itself. Their attacks have already disrupted maritime routes, compelling vessels to opt for longer journeys, bypassing the Red Sea and Suez Canal.